We're making sure that the entire package makes as much sense as possible for the needs of Canadians and for the needs of our economy. Imagine you're a Muslim student who's traveled halfway across the world to study in Canada, you've made friends, started to build a life, and suddenly, the rules change. That's what's happening right now. Thousands of Muslim students in Canada are hitting the streets in protest. Why? They're worried they might be forced to leave the country they've come to call home. It all started when Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's government announced some big changes to how Canada handles international workers. Back in January, Canada said, we're going to cut down on the number of new international student permits by 35% starting September 1st, 2024. Canada used to be known as a welcoming place for people from all over the world. So why the sudden change of heart, especially towards Muslim immigrants? This is why Canada doesn't want Muslim immigrants anymore. To understand all this, we must go back in time to see how it all started. In 1971, Canada took a bold step, becoming the first nation to officially embrace multiculturalism. Fast forward to 2023, and we're witnessing a stark contrast. This shift raises questions about the evolution of Canada's celebrated diversity. The 1971 policy aimed to recognize and value the cultural contribution of all Canadians. In the 1970s, Canada's Muslim population was tiny, just 33,000 people. Fast forward to 2011, and that number exploded to 1.1 million. That's a massive change in just a few decades. So what sparked this? A perfect storm of global events and Canadian policies, global turmoil, the Iranian Revolution, wars in Iraq, Lebanon, and Bosnia. These conflicts pushed many Muslims to seek safer homes. Canada, with its reputation for stability and openness, became an attractive option. In 1967, Canada introduced a points-based system for immigration. Instead of focusing on where people came from, it prioritized skills and education. This opened doors for skilled immigrants from Muslim-majority countries. At first, things seemed to be going smoothly. Muslims were making their mark in Canadian society. Maria Monsef became the first Muslim woman in the Canadian cabinet. Mohamed Faki built a successful restaurant chain. Nazim Kadri became an NHL star. These weren't just isolated success stories. Muslim Canadians were contributing across the board in healthcare, tech, you name it. But it wasn't all smooth sailing. Cultural differences led to some bumps in the road, issues like gender roles and religious practices in public spaces occasionally caused tension. As the Muslim population grew, it became more visible. Islamic schools popped up, and some workplaces started recognizing Muslim holidays. This visibility was a double-edged sword. On one hand, it showed how Canada's multicultural experiment was working. On the other, it set the stage for debates about Canadian identity and the limits of cultural accommodation. The events of September 11, 2001 hit Canada like a shockwave, drastically altering the landscape for Muslim Canadians. Canadians almost overnight. It was a brutal wake-up call that shattered the nation's multicultural idol and exposed fault lines that many hadn't even realized existed. In the blink of an eye, the perception of Muslims in Canada shifted. People who had been neighbors, colleagues, and friends suddenly found themselves viewed with suspicion and fear. Hate crimes against Muslims skyrocketed from 11 in 2000 to 66 in 2001. That's a six-fold increase in just one year. And it wasn't a temporary blip. By 2015, these incidents had surged by an alarming 253% compared to 2012 levels. The Canadian government tried to stem the tide of fear and prejudice. Prime Minister Jean Chrétien's visit to an Ottawa mosque just days after 9-11 was a powerful symbolic gesture, essentially saying, these are our people too. It was a commendable attempt to uphold Canada's multicultural values in the face of unprecedented challenges. Uh, but here's where things get complicated. The government's response wasn't all kumbaya and group hugs. The Anti-Terrorism Act rushed through in December 2001, gave law enforcement expanded powers that many argued unfairly targeted Muslim communities. It's the classic security versus liberty dilemma, played out in real time with real consequences for Canadian Muslims. This period marked a pivotal moment for Canada's multicultural experiment. The nation found itself grappling with difficult questions. How do you balance security concerns with civil liberties? How do you maintain an open, welcoming society in the face of fear and uncertainty? How do you protect a minority community from discrimination while addressing legitimate security concerns? The aftermath of 9-11 exposed the fragility of Canada's multicultural consensus. It revealed how quickly attitudes could shift and how deeply ingrained prejudices could resurface under pressure. For many Muslim Canadians, it was a harsh reminder of their perceived otherness in a country that they called home. This chapter in Canada's history serves as a sobering reminder that multiculturalism isn't just about celebrating diversity in good times. It's about maintaining those principles even when they're tested to their limits. The true measure of a society's commitment to diversity isn't how it acts when things are easy, but how it responds when faced with fear, uncertainty, and the temptation to scapegoat minority communities.